Have you ever wondered where and how to spend your money best on your current property? Where do you spend those renovation dollars? What has the biggest impact? What's going to make buyers excited about your house in the future? Today, we're talking about the things we see on the front line about what buyers are sensitive to and our advice on where to best spend your money. So let's get after it. All right, Chris, so today we're talking about how to spend money on your house, your villa, your property. And, and it's a discussion that's so important for people because it really kind of comes down to maybe a, a couple things. Are you doing it for your own enjoyment, right? Like, I just want to make the house look exactly the way yeah, I want it right, to. Right. Or, or are you thinking about it maybe sightlining down? Uh, maybe you're thinking about a future resale or maybe you're thinking about a, a now resale. Like, hey, what do I need to do to make my house much more palatable and exciting for the market. So we just kind of wanted to talk about what we're seeing on the front line. And, and one of the things that, that we see, I know so many times we're doing an on-site consultation with people yeah. that are maybe in that, in the, those, those latter two categories. I'm thinking about going to the market as soon as I can, or I want to make a decision, a good decision with my money because I'm thinking about reselling in two, three, four, or five years. So what right. are you seeing? Like when you're having those conversations with a current property owner and they're saying, how do I spend my money? Where's that conversation go? Well, I think most people fall into the category of, hey, I want to do this because I want to enjoy having a renovated home or having some updates to my home. Sure. But they also want to position themselves for, they want to make smart decisions so that when they do sell, whether it's soon or later or much later, they get their money back. Yeah. And so I think that's one of the things. And, and we're finding that the people that have the most success with this are the ones that set out a timeline and, and really plan this as opposed to the folks that are ready to sell now and then, okay, what do I need to do to get my house better? Now, there, there are solutions for that, yeah. but they're limited. Yeah, for sure. And so, you know, it, speaking of that timeline and that aspect, we had someone the other day that was at one of our downsizing workshops. and. And she said, oh, my house is, it's all circa 1985. And she said, where do I, which area of the house should I spend my money on? And I said, that's a, that's a great question. And so glad that she's asking the question. But I think she was in the direction of, do I do the kitchen or do I do the primary bathroom? Right. And, and my answer was, and I think that you, you know, you've had the same kind of concept is, there's this snowball effect, what we found. And in fact, there's a National Association of Realtors renovation study that was put out. And it basically said that I think some 80% of people found that once they started a project, they wanted to then move on to the next project. And I think that my answer back to the, to the attendee was, if you just do the kitchen and you go on the market, a, a buyer's going to come up and say, I love the kitchen, but, but what about the rest of the house? But. Right. And, and, and why didn't you spend the money? It's like, well, because I didn't have the money. I didn't gear up in renovating my entire house to bring it to market. So our advice might be in a situation like that, and every house is different, like snowflakes, right? Is that, hey, maybe you could have spent a little bit less money in the kitchen. There could have been impact you had in the kitchen mm -hmm. and in the primary. And oh, by the way, you could have had impact in some other areas as well. That's, I mean, we've seen it. We've seen it in simple as simple as one bathroom gets renovated and the other doesn't. Yes. And what it does is it, it, the buyer that walks into that property, it just causes some confusion. Right. And it takes away from the excitement because immediately the buyer jumps into, okay, wait a minute, this means I've got to do a project. Wait a minute, how much is it going to cost? Who am I going to call? I don't even live down here. How, what? Yeah. And, and they it, lose that momentum that they had walking into the door. Right, they could have been maybe encouraged if there was a little bit of an update or splash everywhere else. Little as splash. opposed to, mm -hmm. you know, all of a sudden you do the kitchen and unfortunately the kitchen looks fantastic. Yes. But then what it does is it highlights how much older everything else is in comparison, right? I think another thing to think about and, and what we can bring to the table to help folks, which we love to do, even if you're not thinking of selling right now, is we are in tons of houses. We're in houses all the time, new construction, we're in remodel projects. Mm -hmm. We were at a house the other day that they were showing us all these new things that they did. So we're constantly getting new, fresh ideas. And it is so much fun to share them because new ideas, I mean, you don't, you don't, 
you don't know what's out there until you start talking to people and looking at magazines and, and televisions and things like that. Hundred percent. It can even go into like the new home construction. Like we've got, we've had some clients that have recently yeah. bought a, a, a new uh, a lot, and and so they're planning their house, and yeah. and we've gone through that process where listen, there's no perfect house, even if you plan it right now, mm-hmm. but you can make it a little bit more perfect for a buyer upon resale. Resale maybe ten years from now, maybe right. it's twenty years from now. If if maybe you get some insight, say, hey, did you did you leave room for I know you don't want a pool but did you leave room for a pool because a lot of buyers like having pools oh I, I didn't maybe we push the house a little bit more forward or maybe you consider this or maybe you maybe you plumb this or you wire that for future consideration on us I mean like that. you bring up such a great point I mean we're finding more and more how buyers want especially buyers in luxury properties they want swimming pools but sometimes and that that construction can be years out sometimes all they want is to know a pool can be done Correct. so I was talking with some some past clients the other day and they're getting ready to do kind of a backyard deck renovation and they're in a plan Mm -hmm. unit development they're gonna have to go through the ARB review phase and all of that so I said since you're already gonna have to do that you're already gonna have to get an as-built survey you're already gonna have to submit um, plans to the ARB to get approved draw in the swimming pool that they don't want draw in the swimming pool send it through the whole process get it stamped by the ARB don't build the pool but if you sell in five years you can present that to a buyer it's all about paving the road for buyers right so so your property ends up being that much more saleable yeah. if you're appealing to the broadest audience that you possibly can yeah. which in some cases could mean not just that but it could just mean make some good decisions on colors you know like a lot of times people are like well, what's what's the the current colors that we should be using we keep up on that hgtv does a great oh, job yeah, of that yeah. and and we had someone the other day it was so funny in the same workshop someone said oh i painted gray because that's what hgtv told me to do and then the other lady said i don't like the gray at all <laughs> right so so it, it's it is a moving target but trying it to is. keep it more neutral is really important and what we're finding even in that that uh, national association of realtors study is that when people are comparing buying a resale property versus a a new construction property, Mm -hmm. 41% of the people polled that bought a new construction property at a development, et cetera, basically did it because they have no interest in doing any kind of renovation. They don't want to have to deal with dated electrical components or anything like that. And on the flip side of that coin, the people, 6%, only 6% of the people that bought resale properties said they did it because they want a fixer upper, because they want to renovate a house, they want to do a DIY thing. Because the reality is, and and everybody listening, it, it's tough. It's hard yes. to find supplies. It's hard to find yes. vendors and contractors. It's hard to stay on budget. It, it, it can be a very trying task. So again, just getting ahead of that in your planning and thinking about from a resale perspective can go a long, long way. You're right. And I think there's so many little things that can be done that aren't expensive, mm-hmm. that aren't this big fifty, hundred thousand dollar kitchen remodel, but little things that can be done. Technology is, is getting better and better and better. I mean, just adding something like a smart thermostat on a on a villa that you have where you can control it from your iPhone, I mean that's a hundred dollars. Right. And it changes the game. Yeah. All the tech kind of yeah. features that are coming yeah. out, people find that to be kind of sexy in a new house. They right? do. And and what we also find is be thoughtful about where you're spending your money, how you're spending money. Some people think they've got to go to the highest level of the total of the best quality they can get. But the reality is that in some applications, you don't need to go in that direction. In fact, we were talking the other day about everybody's getting excited about uh, luxury vinyl plank, right? Yeah. But it's not the most expensive flooring out there. Nope. The cost has come up because it's Everybody so popular. Wants it. <laughs> but the reality is that as a product, maybe it's not the nicest thing that's out there, but it's just very durable and lasts, et cetera. So yeah. that's a good application as well. So just a little insight into how people, you know, you might want to spend money. You're forecasting about spending money. The reality is, like you and I were just saying, is it's like snowflakes. It, there's no one playbook that you can say this is what you need to do spend your money on paint or renovate the kitchen or do the bath or do the flooring because it's all in context of the total property what the resale market might be how you're going to enjoy it etc so you need to be smart about it sometimes what we're finding is if we can if we can kind of have a little eye and ear uh, yes. and a little chat on the, the process it can go a long way to help someone making sure they're going to get an ROI that's right the more people that can get in and look at it and just give some thought and perspective especially folks that are in the industry that see what buyers like, to, to see where the momentum is right now, you get some real, really good ideas yeah, out of that. Yeah, it makes smart decisions. So yeah. there you have it. So a little bit insight about how to spend your money on your property. As always, hey guys, thanks for watching us on YouTube. Tell a friend about us and we want to we'll look forward to staying in touch with you guys in the future.